We'll start with what we often shouldn't do. The most popular incorrect answer I get to adding these two fractions together. Okay? So what do you think that is? Just to add straight across. To add straight across and get six tenths. Say, well, it's five of something, one of something, and we get six of something. Nope. Okay? Not asking for the right answer. Right now we're talking about mistakes, not the right answer. Oh, is that the no, this is a mistake. This is not true. Okay? This is the wrong answer. I want to help you understand not how to add fractions necessarily right now, but why we would do this first. Why would we do this? Do you have an answer to why we don't do this? Other than we need a common denominator? No, not necessarily. What are you going to say? Um, you have to um, simplify. And that's the the answer is not six tenths, but it's three fifths instead. Yep. Look, there's a difference between right and wrong, right? whether it's right or wrong, whether it's correct, and whether it's <laughs> simplified. Simplified is not more correct than not simplified. Simplified, not simplified, they are correct. They're the right answer. They are equivalent to each other, right? And if they're the correct answer, and they're equal to each other, then they're both correct, okay? Again, not looking for a right answer here. I'm looking for why this could be. What has this person not done other than to say they didn't get a common denominator, or to say this is what you do. So I want to hear what you do, I don't want to hear that you need a common denominator, I want to know why intuitively this isn't correct. Yeah? Because it's not. Okay. Yeah? First, oh, I was going to say come. Right, I don't want to hear that. Okay, so this person tried to add it. Does this person understand what fractions mean? No. We talked about what fractions mean last time, right? Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, we did. All right, let's talk about it again real quick. What does this number and the denominator, what does it mean? You have six times something. This is close. Kind of almost close. Yeah. Six is how much there is. Again, about as close as we were. Second down six is how much. Let's say a little bit more. Six is how many times it got like cut. Uh, okay, are you closer? Six pieces of a whole. Okay, so there's a whole thing like a cake. They got kit to six pieces, and that's what the six means. It's in this many pieces. It takes this many pieces to make the whole cake, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we said, I think we said something like size of pieces last time. All right, let's just saying how big the things are, kind of saying what the things are, right? They're sixths, which means six of them make the whole. And up here, what is this? Yeah. Denominator. Is this the numerator? Numerator. What does it mean, Jason? How many pieces you can have? Out of the second. Yeah. There's six pieces in the hole, and we're talking about five of those pieces. Wait, then how is it possible to take eight of like like let's say it's five and then five, let's say it was an eight. How is it possible that we took eight of six? Are you talking about this fraction, eight sixths? Mm -hmm. Well, it still works. It takes this many to make a whole thing, all right? And we have eight of those pieces. Now, if I had eight pieces, we would need a whole time thing. six of them make one, that's right. We need at least part of another one. That, that's all it that means. Okay. Six is how big they are. It takes six of them to make a whole. We have more than enough to make a whole, right? We have enough to start making another one, but not quite enough to make an entire other one, right? Oh, okay, that makes, it makes a bit more sense now. Okay. okay, so that's what fractions are. So what we're saying here is we have five of a thing, right? And this is just really saying what the things are. They are six. They are these things that if you had six of them, you can make a whole thing. Now to say you have five of these things and one of these things, 
and you have six of some entire other thing, it's the same logic that would make you do something like this. Five apples, just like you have five six, plus one orange, just like you have one fourth, the six of oranges. They just made up a thing for them to be, <laughs> and I have six of them, right? Is an apple an orange? No. Is an orange an apple? No. Is an apple an orange? Yes. yes. Is not? Yes. It is an apple. You can be funny and say that it is, but we all know it's not because apple oranges don't exist. That's awesome. See, and apples are apples, and they're not things that don't exist. Sarah? Just a random question. Couldn't you, like, breed two fruits? Like, they, can you, like, find berries, which are mixed strawberries and pineapples? Right. That would be a fruit. Strawberries are berries. All right, we'll spend our time doing this. What's the question? Strawberries are not strawberries. No. Strawberries are not strawberries. They're better chicken dinosaur ones. Sherman Gilly, shush. Sherman what? I mean, it's hard being the only one. Thank you for helping me to get everybody back on track. Let's stay on track. It's a valid question. Can't you breed fruit? Yes, you can. That's the problem with an analogy. It's just an analogy. And at some point, well, you could make an orange. But even if you made an orange, an apple would not be one of them. It would just be an apple. Okay? An orange would just be an orange. Neither one of them is this hybrid thing. And just putting them in the same place and saying there's six of this thing does not make apples into this hybrid fruit. Right? Actually, oh stop God. with hybrid fruits. This is a waste of time by now. That, that was what I was thinking. Okay. Yes, Diana. So, but, but with the five apples and the one orange, mm -hmm. see, there are fruit. Therefore, meaning we do have six fruits. We don't have six of oranges because mm -hmm. an apple and an orange is its own thing. All right. But we so do have six fruits. Too. We need something that they have in common. They're fruit. They're fruit. We can say there's six fruit, but now that I say there's six fruit, if I just tell you there's six fruit in a bag, you don't know what kind of fruit, right? You don't know how much of each fruit. With fractions, that doesn't have to happen. We, we can add fractions together, and all of the information that they brought is still there, okay? So to say six fruit is the same, is the same as to say like six fractions. Mm -hmm. Six pieces. How big are the pieces? I don't know. I'm just telling you that there's six pieces. Mm -hmm. okay. Which isn't quite what we want because this is about numbers here. We want to figure out how big is this number, whatever five, six plus one fourth is. Well, we don't know like how big the piece is, though, because then we got to draw something to make the thingy and then separate it into another thingy. That way we can get it correct. Okay, so let's look at a picture of five, six and look at a picture of one fourth and see what I'm a denominator. Here is That's cool. that and like that. Okay, so this uh, pie is in six pieces. Agreed? Okay, yeah. but what okay. color is the pie? It doesn't matter what the color is. Pie is red. Stop. Let, let's keep those things to like two a class, okay? So we're out, we're done. We've done two, and we're out. Now we have to concentrate on just the numbers and stuff, okay? Uh, so there's six, this thing is cut into six pieces. A sixth looks like this, and we have five of them. Five sixths, all right? Now, let's look at another identical pie, and we'll talk about fourths. There they are, there's four fourths. We wanna talk about just one of them. One fourth. Now, if you, if we both really enjoy pie, okay, and I were to say, uh, well, I'll take these three, one, two, three, those are my three, and you can have these three. Is that fair? No. no. I have three pieces, you have three pieces. Yeah, but well, one's bigger than the other. Okay, so they're different. Just like apples and oranges are different, these are different things. To add, try and add them up and, and talk about them as if they're the same thing, it's impossible. They're not the same thing, all right? So, the, at least I want you to, if you were going to add or subtract fractions, just stop for a second and think, am I trying to add two things that are not the same? 
If I am, I should just stop and not do that because you cannot add things that are not the same. You can't put apples and oranges together. But what we want to do is, is put these all together into one number, which we can do. The problem we have is that these pieces here are different sizes than these pieces here. But we can cut the pie however we want. We can keep cutting it in whatever way we want until we get the same number of pieces here and the same number of pieces here. Okay? The world of mathematics, fractions, it's always possible. We can always take this pie, cut it in a certain way, cut this in a different way, and we'll have the same number of pieces in each. Right? Uh, one way I could do it, I could cut each of these six pieces into four pieces each. Right? Because there's four over here. So if I divide these six pieces into four pieces and these four pieces into six pieces, right? I could always do that. Then in this case, I'll have six times four, I'll have six groups of four. Then here I'll have four times six, and we'll both have 24, right? But there's an even better way, right? There's a little less work. You just cut the four into six pieces and then leave that six pieces. <coughs> four into six pieces and leave this as six pieces. Well, yeah, Pie into six pieces. I think of what I said maybe didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to. That doesn't make it six pieces though. Because then that makes it eight. Like, two pieces will be bigger than the other four. Because now you have eight pieces instead of six. Well, yeah. Well, I have a bunch of differently sized pieces too. Or if I just, if I say, well, let's just cut it differently and let's cut it into six pieces. I can't get this piece to fit inside of these size pieces. Right? What I was saying is if I take this piece and cut it into six pieces or four pieces, and this piece and make it four pieces, and all these pieces and make it each four pieces each, and make each of these six pieces each, right, then both pies would be cut into 24 pieces. Right? There's a smaller number of pieces that I can go to. Which happens sometimes. I can cut this in each of these pieces into how many? each of these pieces into how many and wind up with the same pieces in both pies. Is that? <sighs> 12. We can get both pies to be cut evenly into 12 pieces. Because in math words, 6 is a factor of 12 and 4 is a factor of 12. 6 can be multiplied by 2 to get 12, 4 can be multiplied by 2 to get 12. So what that would look like in a pie as I come along and I cut this piece in half and cut this piece this one, this one, and this one. Now how many pieces does this pie cut into? Twelve. And how many pieces will this be if I cut each of these into three pieces each? Twelve. Twelve. Oh. Yeah, we figured it out. So, what have we just done? Before we had apples and oranges, right? sixths and fourths, and we could not put them together because they're just not the same thing. We made pie that was the same flavor and color, and then we split it into 12. We split them into 12 pieces each. We made it so that both of them splits into 12, and the number of pieces that we had before is a nice round number of those things. We had 5 sixths. Right. Now that it's twelfths, how many twelfths do we have shaded in? Uh, we 10. How did you figure that out? Uh, because I need count the ones that were shaded. Okay, you count the ones that weren't shaded in and you subtract it. Yeah. Or we could say we had five before. How many pieces did we cut those each into? Two, which would make Two. ten. And then Twice as many as before, right? I took each of the six pieces and I doubled the number of pieces. Would it be three? Hold on, I don't think. Okay, never mind, I got this. Yeah. At the same time that I was doubling all of the six pieces, I would obviously doubled the number of pieces that I had, right? those got doubled. In this other pie, we cut each of the four pieces into three pieces, so the number of pieces has tripled. And here we did the same thing. Of course, that one piece that we had, that we took out, has been divided into three pieces as well, so there's three of those pieces. Right. So we get 10 twelfths plus three twelfths. How you do that is 
It's not as important as your understanding why we even bother. Okay? So why do we bother getting the denominators to be the same? Why do we bother with the common denominators? Hard to it's impossible otherwise, right? Can we add this together without having a common denominator? No. How do we do it? Why can we not add 5, 6 to 1 fourth and just say like, common denominators, no one would ever make a mistake when adding fractions. But I'm choosing to bring it up now, so do you think people make mistakes when adding fractions? Yeah. yeah. A lot. Okay. Because they don't know when they're supposed to find common denominators, they don't know why they need common denominators, they don't understand. They just memorized the wrong thing for the wrong time. People who make mistakes and not finding common denominators for adding usually find common denominators when they're multiplying. Which in that case just makes more work than you need to have for yourself. Okay. What's the point of the common denominator? We have already said it many times today. Why do we need common denominators when we're adding fractions? Because it's impossible without them. Why? It just works like that. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Things are these. What are these things? Orange pie. What's that? Parts of a whole. They are parts of a whole. What kind of parts of a whole are they? There's are five of these things. There's six. The things that they are are six. Just like oranges, right? That's what they are. They are six. What are these things? The fourths. They're fourths. One fourth. Are six and fourths the same thing? No. No. Adding is just collecting the same things together, right? I got two of them over here, I got three of them over here, all together I got five of them. Okay. Can I collect things that are not different and say, oh, I just got a big group of them? Oh, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. You can, you can collect a bunch of fruit, and you don't have to say, hey, I've got oranges, grapes, and pineapple. You could say, hey, I've got fruit. Right, but then we don't know. What type of fruit? What type of fruit. But that's okay. Okay. It's not okay in fractions. Yeah, you cannot you say, I have a bunch of fractions. It does not communicate anything of meaning. You gotta know how big that resulting fraction is. You cannot collect those things together that are not the same and just say, uh, there's one of this thing and there's three of this different thing. I got four things. I don't yeah. know how big that is. Like fruits and vegetables. You got four carrots and then you got three Okay, so that one you'll accept. So then fruits then and vegetables, we can't collect and say, I've got five things. Three carrots uh, plus five apples. Like chocolate and caramel. Can't or do the same with that. Okay. The reason we can't put them together is because sixths and fourths are completely different things. And we can't collect things that are not the same and say that we have a bunch of them. So with fruits and vegetables, sounds like you can't make them the same, but with fractions, we can make them the same. What we have to do to make them the same is just make them the same size. When we multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same number, we're just saying I'll divide each of these six pieces into two pieces each, and each of these five into two pieces each as well. Okay. It would be impossible to divide these into two pieces and these into three pieces. So we're dividing everything into two pieces here, we're breaking them up into uh, sorry, two pieces here, we're dividing them up into three pieces each. And now we've made them the same size. Now these are 12 sizes. These are 12 sizes. And now I can put them together. There's 13 of those 12s. All right. Here in my class, if you write 13 12s, that is perfectly fine. If you write one and one 12, that's the same or different? Same. The number itself is equivalent to the other number. 13 twelfths and 1 and 1 twelfth are the same number. They are the same in size, so either one is fine. So even if we did that on the test, you wouldn't mark it wrong? 
unless I ask specifically for you to write it a certain way. I just say, add these, and you give me one of those, that's fine. So why wouldn't you want to just put it into a proper Why would it be wrong? Why is this not wrong? Well, because, well, I guess it is right, but I don't know. Well, what I want is the answer that's the right number. 13 twelfths or 1 and 1 twelfths are the same number. If I put them on a number line, they are in the same place. Right? The, the thing that frustrated me when I was learning math, the reason why for a while I did not like math, because one, I did not understand why we were doing what we were doing, and two, uh, there was a lot of, I did it right, I got the right answer, but I didn't put it in the form that you assumed I would, so it's wrong. It's right, My num the number's right. Unless I ask you to write in simplest form or something like that, or write as a mixed number, or do not write it as an improper fraction, which I very rarely do, okay? Um, well, except for simplified form, right? Uh, unless I ask for that specifically, if you give me the right number, it's the right number, right? Be kind and don't put a crazy complicated expression that's equal to the right answer. That would be frustrating to try to figure out if that's correct. But 13 twelfths and 1 and 1 twelfths are the same number. Okay? So, less opportunity for you. Two points. At the very least. Okay. I'm going to have you add. Um, Okay, so what do we need? What will the common denominator be? 18. 18. Turn around. Okay, the common denominator will be 18. All right. So that means we're going to make both of these pies cut into 18 pieces total. That's how many pieces total they're going to have. So I'll cut these six pieces into how many pieces each? Three. Three, right? Each of these six pieces, these six pieces. Am I saying you have to draw a picture of a pie every time you add a fraction? No. No, no of course. Why am I drawing this picture? Just to help just understand, understand yeah. what's going on when we multiply the numerator and denominator by something. Okay. So we're dividing each of these into three pieces each. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And. If I'm dividing all of the pieces in the pie into three pieces each, then clearly that's happened to these five pieces as well. How about this other pie? Now I won't draw a picture for this one. We're going to divide each of these into how many pieces? Two. Two, right? The number of the pieces is going to get twice as, bit, twice as many. There are also twice as many of these. So in this case, we start with five six, which is the same as how many eighteenths? 15. 15 18ths. Plus, how many 18ths? 14. 14. Okay, 14 18ths. Which means we have how many 18ths? 29. 29. 29 18ths. Can I simplify that? Yes. 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 Do you misunderstand what I mean by simplify? No, you don't. Can I write it as a mixed number? Yes. 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 That's a different thing. This mixed number is what? 1, One and 11, and 11 18 18ths. 11 Sounds like a question over here? Oh, I just forgot to write as a mixed number? Yeah. Let's talk about, okay, we've, we've seen a picture of cutting each piece into three pieces, and so of course that happens to the five pieces that we're concentrating on as well. All right, but let's look at what's happening here. Five sixths, the number five sixths. 
times the number three over three. We've talked about uh, about fr fraction multiplication and multiply straight across. Really, what we're doing here is multiplying five six by three thirds. What number is this? One. One. One whole is a one thing. One thing. Three divided by three is one three thirds is one whole. Okay. What happens when you multiply five six by one? It's five six. It's it's still five, six. six. When you multiply something by one, you get same. the same. The same thing, whatever that was. Okay. Five, same thing is happening here. Multiplying by one. Can I multiply a number by one and not change the yep. number? Yeah. No matter what that one looks like, I can multiply it by one. Okay. All right. I'll move on to dividing by fractions. Let's find out. I'm going to approach this like a lot of you haven't done or can't remember how to divide by a fraction, which seems to be the case. Okay? So I'm going to turn this division problem into a multiplication problem, but I'm going to do it not by memory. I'm going to justify every step with math. Okay? So if you did it correctly, great. And you'll have a way to explain why it works. If you're not sure, what you can do, then this will be the way that you learn. It will be a great thing for you because everything you learn is math. Math. All right. So in the last on the last page, I said I established we can multiply this. Well, we can multiply anything by one, right? Multiply anything by one, and one can be represented as a number over itself. Okay. Fraction is a number over itself. So now I'm going to multiply this fraction, this whole thing, by another fraction. The fraction I'm going to multiply it by is 8 fifths over 8 fifths. Oh, yeah. Multiply by 8 fifths over 8 fifths. That's way different than what Mr. Yeah. Yeah. taught us. Yeah. I don't think it's that much different. Mr. When we get all done, I think you'll we see. He told us keep times change flip. Oh, I don't know that now. Keep change flip? Times just times 8 fifths, not 2. I don't freaking remember. Okay. I remember that. It's great that somebody taught you another thing, and that's fine. It does not need to result in a minute or two of discussion about whether or not the other people remember it. Okay? This is what we're doing. All right. So I am multiplying this number by what is this number? Eight fifths over eight fifths, which is a whole one. Okay. I multiply by one, I'm not changing what it is. So whatever the answer is, it's equivalent to 3 fourths divided by 5 eighths. So just multiply by one. Let's see what happens in the denominator. The denominator. If I, let's just multiply straight across. Multiply the fraction straight across. 5 times 8 is 40. And 8 times 5 is 40. It's 40. Obviously, 8 fifths is the reciprocal of 5 eighths. What happens when you multiply a fraction by its own reciprocal? Uh, you get a whole. You get a whole every time. You get the same number over itself. You get 40 over 40, or whatever those two numbers are. Okay? If you think about cross cancellation, 5 could cancel with 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 8 divided by 8 is 1. We have 1. Whatever happens, if I always choose to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, then I get 1 down here. So we'll just go all the way to the end here. Now, whatever I get here, if I divide it by 1, what happens when you divide a number by 1? It's the same number. So up here is the answer. Divided by 1 is still the answer. Yep. So there's the secret. So here we just need to multiply these together. 3 times 8. 24. 24 over five, 4 times 5. Well, if I write this again, it's just the same. 24 20s. Over 1 is? Over 20. 24 20. 20. 20. We can simplify it. Yeah. Make it. One, four, six, four, six, six, six over five, four, you get six fifths. We can, we can handle the multiplication of those two fractions in lots of different ways. You can cross cancel if you are thinking of that, whatever, the simplification is not the important part. The important thing is like, now we have a strategy for dividing by fractions, and it's all math. It's not our memory, it's just math. Right. Little, it is a little bit 
bit tricky, just a little bit, okay? But sometimes that happens. Like we live in 2015 and a lot of people have done a lot of clever things before we came along. Somebody came up with this really clever idea, they had this dividing by a fraction problem and they thought, ooh, I hate dividing by fractions. What if I just do a little tricky thing where I multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator in both and I get one in the denominator and now I'm just multiplying fractions and no longer dividing, so it's not tricky. Yeah. So is um, uh, changing it to multiplication and flipping a fraction, is that wrong then? No, I mean. Because I got a different answer. I probably did it wrong, but. If you, on your paper, started by doing that, about all the other answer. stuff, you should get the same answer. Okay, then I so it seems like you're getting a little arithmetic error somewhere there. So just look it over real quick and see if you can catch that mistake. Is there a way that you can like divide them without multiplying? That's a really like, good question. I was trying to figure that out the other day, or yesterday, with another class, and I realized I hadn't really thought about that. Because the way that I think about division is like 8 divided by Here's how I think about it, or picture it in my head. Here's 8, 0 to 8. And I divide it into four pieces. It's a pretty common way to think about division. Mm -hmm. Right? So I divide it into four pieces. Right? And then I ask myself, in each little piece, how many are there? There's two. Right? That's division in my head. So here, we're going to take 3 fourths. Here's uh, four fourths. Here's three fourths right there. I'm going to divide it into five eighths of a piece. I don't have a good way to think about that. Um, you need to do it on a calculator. Well, sir. I tried. Well, then the calculator is going to be the right answer as long as you put parentheses around it in the right way. I'll do it. Um, let's see. It's a good question. I, I knew yesterday I didn't have a very good answer, and saying it like this is not helping me come up with a very good answer. Because for so many years, I've just taken the denominator, flipped it out, you know, reciprocal, multiply. That's how I do the division of by a fraction. So the honest answer is I don't have a good answer. I want to sit down and think about it and give people who want that answer a better answer. I don't know how to visualize that. It's a good question. Um, yeah. Sometimes, I've been doing math for so long, I realize I kind of fall into the same traps as what I'm trying to help you with. Right? I'm stuck. I don't know how to think about the force divided by 5 eighths. They just turn into more by 8 fifths. Um, Thanks for asking. Sorry, I don't have a good answer. Um, but when we do, it is mathematically sound, we can multiply both numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator, and we get an answer that must be correct. It's got to be correct. I'll come up with a good answer there. So when we divide by a fraction, do you have to do this every time? No, because you can kind of skip over, like when a step is clearly the same every time, I can get to where I just kind of skip over that step, right? Yeah. But at least you can go back now, I would hope you could go back and explain and justify why multiply by the, the reciprocal of the denominator is correct. This is one thing that happens a lot. Here's a mistake that I see a lot. Three fourths divided by five eighths. I see Two more minutes. No, 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 no. Shh. You can stack your thing. The zippers. But here's a mistake that I see a lot. Four thirds times five eighths. Well, with, from the last page, we know that three fourths times 8 fifths is definitely right. Like, we did all the steps, and it's justified. It is the correct answer. 
Is 3 fourths times 8 fifths the same as 4 fifths times 5 eighths? Yeah. 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 We actually get the answer we get here is reciprocal of the correct answer. Right? So you could do it that way, but you learned the answer into the reciprocal. Then, man, we're really getting into memorizing steps, right? And then not going. And then we have all the other stuff memorized. You get to know all the things in general. So, I mean, yes, that would be the right answer. But in this is you know, more mathematical, like magically something the answer is it's not a great way to fill your life. So, just real quick again, if I multiply the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator, this turns into what? A 40 and 40. One whole. One whole. And now I'm dividing by one. When I divide by one, I just get one. One. So I divide by one? Just the same. Just the same. Whatever it is. So this is the answer. Right? If you can remember that, if you can think, well, I know there's something about multiplying the reciprocals in top and bottom, and I'll see how that works out. If I get it over one, great. If I get one over something, well, then I've got this wrong answer. Have a good day.